it wasn't that anti-Semitism was uh, created by the First World War, but it was certainly strengthened by it. In the middle of uh, a national trauma, uh, as the war was going badly for Germany and conditions were worsening at home, people looked around for scapegoats. And they found them uh, wherever they looked, whether these scapegoats were socialists, whether they, whether they were um, big businessmen, tycoons, or whether they were Jews. And many people saw um, the businessmen as archetypally Jewish. It wasn't strictly speaking true, actually, but they nonetheless looked for them and saw profiteers as being Jewish capital, which had brought Germany into the war and was responsible for the deaths of millions. As the war ended, therefore, anti-Semitism was much stronger than it had been before, even though German Jews had fought very courageously in the war. The death rate of German Jews was equal to that of non-Jewish Germans. Um, there was even a census carried out in 1916 which demonstrated that the Jews had fought courageously, although the results of the census were not published. And the fact that the Jew Germans felt it necessary to hold this census again says something about the extent to which anti-Semitism was gaining hold and these calumnies about the Jews not pulling their weight were catching hold in Germany in 1916. Jews themselves had um, often welcomed the Russian Revolution in 1917. They'd seen this as a, an emancipation and they'd looked to the chances that this brought them from freedom, from the persecution that they'd been used to in the Russian Empire before 1917. And many of them actually um, joined the Communist Party or became agents of the Communist state and this um, increased the uh, absolute hatred and detestation shown towards them by the right, by the nationalist right in Eastern Europe in the period immediately following the First World War. And when the Russian Civil War began between 1919 and 1922, um, then the uh, horror for the Jews was absolutely massive something like 50,000 or more Jews were killed in Ukraine, hundreds were killed in eastern Poland, um, many more were killed, again, um, probably ranging into the lower thousands in Hungary in the post-war um, turmoil. And everywhere anti-Semitism was a central part of the armory of the paramilitary and the extreme right. So Germany in this way um, was fitting into a pattern which was widespread throughout Europe and quite especially in Central and Eastern Europe. What was crucial was the fact that in 1933, Hitler, the most radical of all the radicals when it came to the Jews, became the leader of Germany. He was by then followed by a huge political army, millions of supporters, uh, around about 30 million Germans had voted for Hitler in elections, in free elections in 1932. When it comes to a war in 1939, to a second war, this time one which bears the absolute imprint of Adolf Hitler, this second war saw as, a, from the German point of view, saw as a major part of the war effort itself the destruction of the Jews. So what we have there is actually a link between the First World War and the Second World War, as to be seen in Hitler's um, notorious so-called prophecy of 1939, a link between the war of 1914, seen in Nazi eyes, as caused by the Jews, the catastrophe of 1918 caused by the Jews, which then led to 14 years of this hateful socialist Marxist-run democracy. From 1933, the triumph of uh, the Nazis over this um, detestable Germany, which had prevailed for 14 years, and the triumph of the new Germany. And now in 1939, again in Nazi eyes, Germany being plunged into another war by the machinations of world Jewry 
and this time there'd be no holding back that the result of that war would be the total destruction of Jews altogether.